I decided I wanted to go to university. I wasn't sure what to read at university uh, because none of uh, my sister had gone, but nobody else in the family had ever been. So um, when my sister went up to Oxford, I went to visit her. And one of the first people I met was a friend of hers called Heather Hallett. And um, Heather was inspirational. She was um, uh, so confident, so beautiful, all of the things that you know we all at 16 would aspire to. And um, she was reading law and she took me under her wing and she said that she thought that was, the, that was the degree I should apply for and it had a great career to follow. I did my um, law degree at Cambridge, which was great fun. Uh, there were eight of us in the females in the law department then and 250 men. So that was enjoyable, but hard work. Um, and the highlight is several highlights, but qualifying as a solicitor um, and doing my articles, as they were then called, at Stafford Clark, where um, there was one female partner, but I was really the only other woman around. If I'm entirely honest, I think it was an advantage being a woman because um, uh, I, I was unusual. Um, the partners there bent over backwards to um, help me and um, introduce me to people. And I think clients liked a woman because, again, it was unusual at the time. When I saw the advertisement and I was thinking, did I really want to be a litigation solicitor for the rest of my working life? Uh, it was a rash moment, um, but I thought, well, I'll apply for it. I'm sure they won't have me, but I'll apply for it because they're looking for graduates. It was a bit of a culture shock, I have to say. So having had an office of my own and a secretary, um, I went into a clerk's room, which was entirely male, um, of people who had done um, GCSEs, but not anything beyond that and um, most all of them who obviously knew each other and most of them who had come from families where somebody else had been a clerk because that was the only way you knew about the job. It wasn't easy because they w when we weren't furiously working they were all talking about things that meant nothing to me football whatever else it was beer um, all things that meant nothing to me. There was a very much a sort of an upstairs downstairs type culture where the barristers were called Sir and um, never called anything else other than Mr or whatever it was, but generally Sir. Um, and I'd been to university with some of them, so that wasn't going to... Um, I, there was no way I was going to call them Sir. They were lock very lucky if I called them Mr So-and-so. But that sort of began to evaporate. Um, and by opening up the clerk's room and having different people there, um, it became more informal. And today, people all call themselves by the first names in most chambers. Most of the job then, and now to some extent, is it's all on the phone. Obviously, we now have email and everything else, but predominantly still it's on the telephone. So I would be um, answering the phone, uh, and the solicitors were quite surprised to hear, one, my, my accent, but two, that I was a female. Um, and I built up long-term friendships with a lot of them, and I think they enjoyed speaking to somebody who actually understood a little bit about what they were saying about the case that they were trying to find the right barrister for. And um, again, I, that part of the job is very interesting, great fun. I would switch on the radio in the morning before I went to work and you'd be hearing uh, about some big issue that had arisen and you'd get to the chambers and you'd find that someone was ringing and asking if Robert Alexander or Nicholas Phillips could help them on it. So you were in the forefront of everything that was going on and I loved, it. I loved all of that. When I was starting off um, without email and all the things we now have to juggle, uh, once, once Chambers was closed, that was basically where you stopped worrying about it and you didn't start again until the following morning. So having small children, that was excellent. When I left, I didn't worry about it and I could um, look after the children so if my husband was going to be very late working on a case or had to work all weekend or something like that then that wasn't an issue but I did have I was fortunate enough to have a full-time nanny and that was the only way I could possibly have managed it was there that when everything started to modernize they decided that um, they'd like to call me chief executive because the role does change now with the management of a 
multi-million pound business, there's an awful lot to managing that that isn't clerking. So it was a sort of a recognition of that additional responsibilities. I think I have changed people's perception, certainly of clerking, because I think I'm the only person that's come up through the clerking route into the more management of chambers position. On the whole, chambers have kept clerks in one section and then recruited people from accountancy backgrounds or whatever else uh, to come in as chief executives, chambers directors or whatever. So I think the reason um, that uh, other women in, in clerking um, do regard me as blazing a trail is because I've actually come up through their own route into something that is a more general management role and a lot of them obviously would aspire to doing that. <laughs>